Okay, hello, I'm Mark Crilly. I'm uh, going to be focusing on drawing clothes today. Uh, let's just jump in. I've drawn all the sort of non-clothing stuff first. And I've put some guidelines, very rough guidelines, just to give myself a sense of where I'm going with this. But I'm really, with this video, just going to kind of jump in and go uh, to final lines as quickly as possible. Um, I'm starting off by drawing the collar of the shirt here. And I want to do one of these... Uh, you know, kind of classic manga high school boy drawings where the shirt is uh, un untucked and going all over the place, and so you'll see a lot of wrinkles. And I think that's what people, you know, I've had a lot of requests with people saying, hey, do something on clothes. I think what they're talking about really is uh, the wrinkles. The wrinkles can be very hard. So that's really what I'm going to be focusing on today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the shoulders here. And then let me just start with having drawn this collar shape here. Uh, and notice that the, uh, a lot of boys' collars have a little bit of an extra edge here where the button goes. But anyway, I like to throw in a line or two that comes out behind the collar um, that sort of helps define uh, the collar popping out like that. So that's something you can do. Um, having done the collar part, I'm going to move down now to... Uh, doing the shoulders and I, you can get some nice fairly straight lines coming down here um, you don't have to get too fancy with these main horizontal lines of the arms coming down most of the wrinkles are going to form uh, down here although you are going to see a fair number of wrinkles around the sort of armpit area <laughs> so I'm sort of dashing those in just a little bit. Now here's something interesting that happens with uh, shirts that you might not necessarily expect. expect. The seam uh, where the sleeve connects to the rest of the shirt often hangs down past the shoulder. Um, and that can be true of sweaters and a lot of things. Uh, so that's something that you can try out, see if it works for you. For me, I think it gives it just a little extra authenticity uh, if that line, instead of going right at the shoulder, is sort of hanging past the shoulder. Uh, and, you know, look at real shirts, and you'll see that this kind of thing happens. I'm going to loosely indicate some kind of pockets here. I don't want to get too carried away with that, but I'll, I'm also going to indicate where the buttons would go, this kind of a line. Again, fairly straight, kind of horizontal thing. You just sort of toss on a few buttons if you want. Don't get too carried away with that. Um, I'm going to indicate just with little light lines the lower part of the pockets. I don't like to completely define pockets too much. I think that's kind of going overboard. But let's start to get into the wrinkle zone here. Um, as it comes down here, you're going to see a whole mass of wrinkles uh, that tends to form around the um, waist. And uh, what you can kind of think of it as like a maze. You know, when you see the lines of a maze, there's always sort of a path, a uh, white path, uh, that flows through there. Notice also this shape that I just made here, this kind of hooking shape. That's something you can use as a wrinkle. Uh, uh, the, have your line sort of hook back. Um, let me see if I can find another one that does that. How about over here? And I'll have it hook back. That uh, kind of thing thrown in every once in a while can help uh, define realistic looking wrinkles. I may be actually kind of over, going overboard with the wrinkles here and putting more wrinkles than are necessary and that's something you have to watch. Anyway, his shirt is untucked. So um, you get these sort of triangular shapes that may come down at the bottom uh, as it uh, hangs out. I like to add an extra line at the bottom. I don't know if that somehow seems more shirt-like to me when you do that. Uh, in any case, whoops, I'm doing my black Prisma color here, and that always tends to shatter on me uh, when I push down too hard. Anyway, I'm going to get the forearm in here, and then uh, let's try to do uh, the sleeves, kind of like half rolled up sleeves. Let's start by putting in a kind of looping line that goes around uh, where the arm is. And that's your sort of basic uh, half rolled up sleeve. I don't like them to look too much like donuts, though, so I'll put in some line like this that sort of interrupts that. 
uh, the perfection of two banded lines. And I love, and this is something key, I think, to defining shape, is when you have a space that's back here behind, put some lines in here maybe uh, and have them stop at that line, and that helps make that look a little more 3D. Um, I'm spending a lot of time on this one of, of uh, Hiro, the main boy character in my Mickey Falls series. Um, the one over here of Mickey, I'm probably just going to have to do in time lapse, uh, just because there's no way I'd fit all of it in uh, to 10 minutes. But um, yeah, you know, the, uh, doing wrinkles again. Reference is a great idea. Look on the uh, internet for photos. Uh, and then sometimes if you're just sitting, you know, whatever, at a bus stop or the mall or something, just look at people's clothes, the way they hang down, and, and sort of make a mental note of, uh, of how the uh, folds form. Like I said, in this uh, video here, I've probably gone a little too far uh, with doing uh, excessive wrinkles, um, but I just wanted you to see as many lines as possible and, and maybe get some ideas for how those work. Um, I'm not going to make the pants the focus of this video. That could be a whole other video on its own. Um, but let me just go ahead and uh, put in a seam here uh, on the jeans or whatever and get some lines going across here to make that look a little more like uh, real blue jeans. And uh, yeah, I think I'll stop with this and, uh, and for the Miki part of it over here, I'm going to zoom in and then uh, do that part all in time lapse, but then maybe come back and talk a little bit about what I've done after I've finished. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, well, I'll just do a little shading here and talk a little bit about what I did there in time-lapse. Um, with uh, this pose that Miki's doing, most of the wrinkles are coming in around the elbows. Um, again, getting some around the waist. Um, drawing a skirt like this uh, is really not so hard. Uh, mainly the idea with uh, doing pleats like that is you get every other one of them coming down lower. Uh, uh, and then uh, the the line goes uh, a little higher, uh, connecting those first sort of rectangular bars that you made. Um, as I do so often, I like to have it sort of blowing off to one side, uh, give things a, a little motion or drama. And um, otherwise, uh, you you always have to know when to stop with these things and not uh, go overboard with more and more wrinkles. Uh, but uh, notice how uh, uh, around here the, they're sort of uh, pulling up a little bit uh, toward uh, where the buttons are. Over here they're pulling down towards where the elbow is bending. That's something uh, that uh, you'll notice as you stare or you know look at uh, real uh, clothes or photos of uh, people wearing clothes that happens as they move into poses like this. Um, well, that first one that I did of Hiro took a surprisingly long amount of time, uh, so I don't think I can go on too much longer beyond uh, what I've done here. I should point out, though, that I did uh, take the opportunity to add some shading uh, to Hiro here um, to sort of give a little more definition uh, to the clothing there. In particular, getting a little shading back here uh, is a great idea for helping that look a little more 3D. Uh, and just a little bit of shading along these sides can help out that, you know, Again, I can do another video, and I've had requests uh, for videos on shading, so uh, that'll be uh, taken care of in an upcoming vid. But um, once again, I want to thank you for watching my videos, and thank anyone who has bought one of my uh, Mickey Falls uh, manga books. Uh, let me pull back just a touch so you can see a little more of that. I'm pretty excited because I just got my... Uh, comp copies of Mickey Falls Winter, which is really not supposed to be out until January 1st, um, but uh, you can have a quick flip through right now <gasps> and know <laughs> all of the secrets. Yeah, well, not very many of them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the vids and for subscribing, and we'll be back with another one 
real soon.